what stands out to me is the timely rebounds and the timely block we had on Garland at the end of the game. Can you talk about the difference you made, not just offensively, but taking the challenge to be there for your team in all different aspects? Um, yeah, you know, I, I thought it was a winnable game. I know we weren't ourselves. Um, and so, you know, at that point, um, I was locked in and committed to do whatever it took to win. Gotcha. When I asked Coach Ty about this being a character win for you guys, the one had to beat Denver a couple of nights ago without Kawhi and coming back and winning this game, what does it say about the character of your team? Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, like I said, uh, <coughs> post game, it, it, it's these situations aren't ideal. Um, but it's nice when we pose with these challenges that we come together and, uh, you know, we find a way to, you know, kind of just rally together. You know, I thought this was a, a game where we really just uh, just dug down and, 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 you know, that second half was just special. Everybody uh, was locked in defensively. Um, I thought we got the stops that we needed to, to convert. And, uh, you know, we took care of the ball. Um, and, you know, a lot of luck had to happen, um, but I thought we were in position uh, to allow the luck to help. Did you think um, you were both played with a center couple at you? We found uh, Terrence for the three, I think, Amir on the next one. Uh, just at that level of trouble, is that just at an all-time high right now where you know if you're seeing two, you got to find the right open guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I thought I had some shots that uh, uh, I didn't trust. Um, I thought I rushed some and took some. Uh, shots that I could have let the play develop a little bit or rushed uh, some shots. Um, and so I was kind of mindful of those. Um, and so at that point, you know, um, I was trying to read the game and, and, you know, get the best, you know, shot possible in those possessions. Shooting-wise, I don't think you're the best to start, but I think in that fourth quarter you really found it. I guess at, at what point in that fourth did you know, um, you know, this is going to kind of be your quarter? Um, I mean, you don't know. Um, but, you know, uh, T-Boo trusted me to, you know, I told him, uh, don't take me out. Um, I wanted to stay in and, you know, I just felt we were making a good push. And, um, uh, you know, he trusted me to just continue it on. And you don't know, you know. Um, but like I've been saying, you know, I'm just played to the, to the clock, hit zero. Um, and, you know, I just thought we were in striking range uh, and, and my aggression just got, you know, um, you know, higher, and so uh, it was just a will to win at that point. Well, okay, Paul, uh, during the summer, we see you like working a lot on your counters, um, and it translates into moments like this, you know, ending with the sidestep. Can you talk a little bit more about the unseen hours that you do? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I spent a ton of hours in the gym, um, you know, and, and you know, the snippets that have made it on Instagram or on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm doing those repetition, uh, or that's been my repetition of, of moves um, over and over again, and, and just being comfortable in those spaces. Um, and you know, honestly, I feel I can get you know any shot or any look um, that I want to. And so, uh, at that point, it was just you know trying to read where I can find space, and um, you know, going away from two seven footers. <laughs> Uh, seemed uh, ideal in that moment. Hey, Paul, um, so you've been for the five years. So you know how these afternoon games are. What we always ask you about, um, y'all been down double digits in all of them at some point. You mess around and won six of, of those games that you got to come back and win. Like, what is the common thread of that time where you have to, where you make that comeback push? Like, what is it that, you know, happens where you guys are like, all right, we ready to start playing now. Um, it's just a desperation. I think the team understands the desperation. Um, and it's, uh, you know, either you lay down or you could, you know, try to do something different. And uh, for us, like I said, we knew that first half wasn't us. Uh, defensively, um, you know, 80 points in the first half. You know, there's it just no defense being played at all on our behalf. So. Uh, I thought defensively we stepped it up and um, played a little bit more physical and, uh, you know, we just kept chipping away and, you know, at that point we just gave ourselves a chance, honestly. Um, and that's been the case on all of those occasions that we came back, you know, it, we, we recognized it wasn't us 
and we just addressed it. Just a follow up, like, because we got another one of these next week, and then you know a lot of playoffs are tight. Like, y'all gonna have at least one of those in the playoffs. Like, what can y'all do when the time comes to where y'all can be ready to start those games and, and just play a normal game in the afternoon? Yeah, um, I mean, not sure. We're not there yet. Uh, hopefully, we locked up and I don't need to be in that one. So, uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, my focus is this is next one uh, with Phoenix. And so, you know, we'll get there when we get there. Take two more. Uh, Paul, what's happening? Uh, you spoke about having a coach that trusts you. you know, what is, can you give your thoughts on this? Like, what does that do for you to have a coach that trusts you to make the right decision? Also, for years, you've been a, a huge advocate of uh, women's basketball. Can you elaborate on how uh, women's basketball has emerged this year? Yeah. Um, the first question, uh, you know, it, it means, you know, everything, obviously. T. Lou trusts me with the ball in my hands, trusts me down the stretch, um, trusts me with the minutes. Um, you know, it means everything uh, for me to go out and do what I do and, you know, for him to know, you know, um, that the ball is in good hands for me to play make and, and kind of take over and, um, you know, it just allows me to be comfortable and, and, and be aggressive and, um, you know, not only him, my teammates, you know, trust me. Um, and so, you know, that just, you know, it just takes the pressure off of me feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm asserting myself, but it's not wanted. Um, so, you know, that helps in that scenario. but. Uh, the women's game, I think, is awesome. I think that it's great. It's at an all-time high. They're getting the recognition that is much deserved. Um, there's just so much star, star power in the college, the you know, women's college game. Um, and uh, I think, you know, especially with Juju Watkins coming up, um, it's, it just seems the torch is constantly just getting handed off from Caitlin to Paige to Juju. Um, you know, Angel Reese, uh, of course, I think was probably the most iconic. Um, to start it off, and then now it's just a wave of uh, women uh, getting notarized, which in, in, in which they should. But uh, the game is special uh, where it is right now. Uh, again, it's just so much talent. Uh, I think for the first time, um, you know, people are going to be tuned into, you know, I won't say the first time. I won't, you know, disrespect the, the game or the sport. Um, but I don't necessarily know, but I, I, for sure people will be tuned into the women's draft and who's going where, and I think it would just be so much more hype involved around that um, because of, you know, uh, what the women have done in their collegiate runs. Um, so I'm excited for where, where it is. I've been a huge advocate because my sister played, obviously, and watched her for years, so I'm very, you know, close to the women's game. So, um, yeah, continue with support, and... Uh, Actually, shout out Juju Watkins. She'll be on the pod, uh, Aaron, pretty soon. So y'all will see that. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable interview that we had with her. So, uh, yeah, tune in the podcast, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> right, last question, John. Uh, Pete, last question, John. PG, uh, Ty talked a lot about the job that the bench did to kind of keep this game close and put you guys in position to make the comeback. Can you just talk about how big they were for you guys tonight? Uh, with the bench, yeah, they were great. I thought, uh, you know, Russ brought a ton of energy, which he always does. Um, and uh, I thought Mace was good, Amir, big three. Um, uh, Norm was aggressive, uh, made some timely shots. Um, you yeah, know, I thought it was just a collective team win. Um, you know, I, I, I can't take credit for, you know, none of it without them. I thought they were they, they made the big shots. I told T Man, we don't if he doesn't make that three, none of that would have happened to finish the game. Uh and and uh told Amir, you know, without that shot, you know, uh we're walking away with a L. So, you know, those guys hit the biggest shots of the night, um, or of the evening, um, or afternoon, shit. <laughs> checking your clock and shit. <laughs> uh but you know, they yeah, they made the biggest shots of, of the afternoon and, and you know, it, it couldn't have happened without those guys, you know, chipping in and, and doing what they do. Actually, guys, thank you.